Emma Thomas is a science teacher at Stratton Upper School in Biggleswade, Bedfordshire. Emma is also Head of Year 11 Science and GCSE Science Coordinator, a role she shares with the Head of Year 10 Science. On top of her responsibilities at school, Emma is juggling being a single mum to daughter Ellie. Can I lean on the door now? Asked Biggles. Besides Ellie, Emma shares the house with three cats. Sorry, make that four cats. A school of fish and Sooty the gerbil. Ellie, being a typical seven-year-old, has an abundance of energy and lots of hobbies, including brownies, ballet, swimming, going to music class and playing the violin. This hectic timetable means there isn't much time left for Emma. Emma feels she is perhaps not managing her time as effectively as she could. So in an attempt to find time for herself, Emma asks Teachers TV to help her find time to practice her viola. Life coach Gladina McMahon may not be able to play the viola, but she can certainly add a few more strings to Emma's organisational bow. Hi Emma, Hi. I'm Gladina, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Oh lovely, thank you. So Emma, how can I help? Really, I'd like some time to myself. Mm -hmm. I um, decided I'm going to take up a hobby. My daughter's learning to do the violin, mm -hmm. so I thought I'll, I'll learn to learn, play the viola. Uh, unfortunately, I can make time for her to practice the violin, but I don't seem to get time to practice my viola. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to be able to make some, myself some spare time to be able to do that. So tell me, what gets in the way? Uh, school, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Um, I get free periods at school, and the school are very good at making sure that we do have our free periods, but I'm wondering whether I'm using them effectively. I seem to be wandering around with bits of paper quite a lot. So really what we're talking about is that you would like some help in sorting out your systems so that they work for you, so that you can get as much done as possible, but also, can I suggest something, that you get a life as well? So we've got the balance. I think that the whole work-life balance is out. Yeah. OK, so that sounds like that's our task. OK. OK. Lovely. Right, we'll get on with that. <laughs> Gladina has her work cut out for her. Emma's day starts as early as 6.40am and Gladina was there, coffee in hand, ready to observe Emma both in her home life and school life. After dropping Ellie off, Emma sets off for a half an hour drive to school, generally getting there about 8am. Once she's there, she tries to fit in as much admin as she can before the school day officially starts. Gladina was also interested to see how Emma conducted herself in the classroom environment. So far then, for our SRE section of TSRHE. So this lesson is here to prove you completely wrong. To show you that these STIs are horrible. They are nasty. Don't talk while I'm talking. Yeah. But the whole point is you quite like double the <laughs> Not I tell you what the answer is. Right. Now if we could get Emma to use her teaching persona on herself, we've got a winner. Because when she knew she had to be in teacher mode, she was firm, she was in control, she knew what you had, she had to do, and her whole body language changed. Now if she could attack her own life in that way, she'd be a winner. After observing Emma all day, Gladina had a much clearer picture of how Emma used or misused her time. Gladina managed to persuade a busy Emma to take time out to discuss how she might be able to find extra time for herself. I mean, you know, 168 hours in the week, you need to block those out to look at what's essential. What you've got left, you have choices with. And it is about choices, because you're not going to fit it all in. Yeah. <laughs> How does that feel to you? Um, I think it's something I've known but ignored. OK, because? So because I've got too much to do. Uh -huh. So have you ever been overtired or made yourself unwell? Yes, I had a period about 18 months, two years ago, mm -hmm. when I had to have two weeks off um, through a viral infection that was brought on through exhaustion. OK. So you've had a warning shot? Yeah. And did that modify your behaviour in any way? Sort of. I think I didn't do less, I just changed the things I was doing. So instead of all being work-related, I suppose it's now Ellie-related. Mm -hmm. um, when we do the ballet and the brownies and the swimming and violin. So instead of doing work things, I'm doing things with her, but I'm not doing any less than I was, mm. maybe. Mm. 
Because one of the things that we know for people who get chronic fatigue syndrome is they're very often your personality type. They're people that, you know, push themselves beyond their physical limits. They don't like to say no. They don't like to let people down. They're full on 24-7 trying to keep everything going. They then get some sort of, you know, cold or whatever. And the next thing you know, you've got chronic fatigue syndrome. And then you will be flat on your back for a long time. Now, what would you rather do? Pull back now or wait for that? Pull back now. <laughs> right, OK. So in which case, we're looking at a number of things for you to do. The first is, I actually want you to go away and draw yourself up a timetable. And on that timetable, I want you to mark out the 168 hours that you've got. And I want you to go through it and then... Take out of that all the core activities that have to be done. Now, there are work-related core activities, but there are also personal ones like Ellie, mm -hmm. like sleep. Score out the amount of sleep you need. Put in an hour or so downtime for you to relax before you go to sleep so that that is in there. And then, when you've put all those things in, I want you to see how much time is actually left over and I want you to take a third of that for yourself. So does yeah. that seem feasible? Yes. First bit of homework. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and I shall be back to check on it. <laughs> okay. Second bit of homework that I want you to do. And that is that I want you to develop a circuit breaker. And a circuit breaker is where, because you're so good at saying yes, it will be hard for you to say no. So to do that, you have to put a barrier between yourself and the other person for a little bit of time, just so you can go away, think about whether you want to do it or not. And a circuit breaker goes like this. I say to you, um, Emma, can you help me with this? And you say, oh, can I just chat to you in a minute? Mm -hmm. Or just got to pop to the loo. Mm -hmm. Or I'll ring you back in five. Something's just popped up. And you use that time to just think, hang on a minute, is this truly an essential item? Do I really need to be doing this? If the answer is no, I'm just thinking I should, you can plan what you're going to say. And that gives you time to plan so that you can then go back to the person and actually in your mind you've worked out what you're going to say. So that's the second circuit breaker that's going in there because I think that's really, really crucial for you. So you've got these two homework tasks. How do you think you're going to fare on them? As long as I put them into my schedule, <laughs> my list of things to do, then, yeah, I'll get them done. As I prioritise. As I put it, not, no, 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 no. How are you going to make them happen? Um, Practising no in front of the mirror. Um, and my daughter's away this weekend, so I've got some time. So I'll do the timetable this mm -hmm. weekend, go on the computer and do the timetable and get it sorted out. You will get ill if you continue the way you are. I would put money on it. And that's not, that's not going to be helpful. It's going to be self-defeating. So if you don't want to get ill... It's OK to put the ironing at the bottom of the list. Exactly. Do you know, nobody ever died because the ironing <laughs> wasn't, wasn't done. done. <laughs> I've, I mean, it's a bit amazing, that. People have actually died from stress. I can actually yeah. give you clinical case studies of that. But I've never known anyone dying because the ironing wasn't done. OK. <laughs> Lenina set me some tasks when we started. She sent me some tasks on how to say no, and I've been practising saying no. If somebody's phoned me and asked me to do something, instead of saying, oh, yes, or well, maybe I've sort of said, well, can I get back to you? And that's been really good, because it's given me the opportunity to think, well, is this something I really should be doing, or should I be concentrating on my things? That's been really good. And um, I've also done a timetable of what time I have and what I'm going to do, from basic things like getting up and eating, to planning and writing um, and marking. And I've just found that I've got so much time that I'm not using to the best advantage, but because I am now and I've planned it and do more in school, means I'm doing less at home, which is really good. After Gladina left, Emma wasted no time tackling the homework she had been set starting with colour-coded timetables for all areas of her life, work and home. True to her word, Gladina arrived back at Stratton Upper School to check Emma had completed the homework tasks Gladina had set. So I've got my timetable pinned to the wall here. Mm -hmm. 
then the time I come into school and the time I have to leave for things like Ellie's ballet and going swimming. Mm -hmm. And I've blocked it off and I've blocked off um, admin time. Right. So I've only got specific times during the day when mm -hmm. I'm running around school. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done that in the morning mm -hmm. and also the half hour at lunchtime that I have. Okay. That, that's fantastic. So what have you learned by doing this exercise? Um, how to use my time uh, more effectively. Because mm -hmm. at the moment, I'm, I say on a Tuesday, I'm in at 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. I leave at 5, but I actually have a two free periods. So. Oh, someone wants you. Hello, science. Yeah. Can I get back to you on that? I'm quite busy at the moment, but I may be able to fit you in if I can get back to you when I have a look what I've got on. Thanks. Bye. Whoa! Didn't say no straight away, but I'm going to ring back and say no because I know I haven't got time to do it. Gosh, I know it won't fit into my space. And how did it one feel, one. sort of being able to to actually take some control like that? Uh, it felt good because I could sort of I wasn't saying no straight away. Mm -hmm. I shall say no, but I'll be I'll take a deep breath and say no and wait for the gift. Well, absolutely, because what you've done is you've put the circuit breaker in operation. You're now able to take your deep breath, yeah. think about whether you can do it and should do it, or mm -hmm. even want to do yeah. it, and now you can plan what you're going to say when you ring back. Yep. Gosh, yep. I am impressed. Okay. That's the third time I've done that. The third weeks. time? The third time in two weeks, yes. Yeah, so yeah, quite pleased. Yeah, sounds like you've really put a lot of effort into doing mm. this now and, and getting some benefits for it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think you're going to become the time queen myself. <laughs> I think I've enjoyed just the time where I found that it is time for myself and because I've timetabled it, I'm not feeling guilty because I've taken it away from something else, it is time for myself. So I could practice my viola or just sit on the sofa for half an hour and I didn't have to feel guilty and I didn't have to feel like I should be doing something else because I knew it was me time. We played in an end of term concert last Sunday, myself and Eleanor. And that went so much better because I'd actually managed to practice the viola for three half hour sessions during the week and I just felt I was more confident with the music and I really enjoyed it and I think I'd have been a bit wary if I hadn't found time to practice. I think I will stick to Gladina's rules because it's, it just makes life so much easier. It's something that you've, I've always known I should be doing but it's really taken Gladina to make me do it. I'm very happy with the results. At least I know where I'm heading. And I know that there is time to do the things I am, and I've also realised that there isn't time to do anything else, so I'm up my limit and that's where I'm going to stay. You're a very short game if you get to one half. Well, we got to play much more games, and I got to sit on the sofa and watch TV with her. What is it? Because um, normally she's like going on the computer and doing some work, and I just sit downstairs watching telly. But, um, and um, now she's able to um, go downstairs and watch Teddy with me. Right. So Emma, you take care. All right, keep it up. Thanks very much. See ya. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Well, you know, one of the things that's really impressed me about Emma is her organisation. And so what we've done is we've used it for her. And by getting that timetable done and by teaching her to say no, I think she'll have time to do a lot more than just play a viola.